Another day, another mission, risking our necks for the Ark. You know, I ask myself, Docs, why are you out here? And you know why. The Ark's water pump is broken again, and Hammond said he needs more scrap to fix it. Yeah, well, we'd do it a lot better if he'd sent us somewhere with actual scrap to find. Why do you have to be so annoying? Hi, I'm Shane Come from on, Astral Dragon Gang, and this is my review of Mutant Year Zero. Road to Eden. It's a really... It's designed like an XCOM game, basically, but it's based off a role-playing game at the same time in a post-apocalyptic post world. And it's really... It's an interesting game. If you like strategy games or XCOM kind of games, you're going to love this game. And if you're not into strategy, I think this kind of a game would change your mind a lot about strategy games. But I'm getting a bit ahead of myself. We'll start off at the basics. Basically, this is a European strategy game that is a role-playing game in um, Sweden, I think, by memory. And basically, it's all dice and rolls and percentages, and you play a character and you try and beat. And your leveling up is slightly different because you use it to mutate your character with different abilities and different skills. But I'm getting ahead of myself. I'll cover that in a bit. But let's talk about the graphics. The graphics is really nice here. There's a lovely sense of realism. The fading in and out of the background objects as you're moving around, really stellar. And also, especially when you switch from normal walking mode and then move over to the combat mode, there is a distinct movement in the graphical style, but it's fantastic how you can have all these different things that make it so great no bites the ducks. but the art style itself is standard post-apocalyptic world like there's up, bits of broken up and technology left right the center and rules. nature's come back and One taken over and it. everything's back to the green mode. but Listen, turn off your at the end of the day the, sneak by the water whole thing really meshes in well and the lighting system and especially that little sort of ring of awareness around each of the mobs that you have to take down which are called ghouls is really a great design it's so vivid it's so immersive and it really creates an entire world that just meshes in so well with the actual story arc and you just end up wandering around sometimes and there are so many wonderful sort of little stories like ducks talking about getting back to the ark having a beer and oh, getting a foot massage when I see it. because he loves a foot massage get a, um, get another a lot of the things in this are really oh, tongue-in-cheek and the humor in here is really great but the realness man. of the situation where cool it's very grim so and dire and, and each stalker that exists is basically the last hope of humanity position. to survive good before the ghouls come in and basically rape, light. pillage and eat everyone in sight. I love a lot of these bits and pieces. Um, the sound files for this are stellar. Right? The music itself is really great. And the sound of the ghouls. The ghouls are really meaty and metallic and almost robotic like but very evil sounding at the same time they really give you a sense of dread and not a very lovable sort of mob that you want to sort of like empathize with no it's something you want to kill on sight and that's what you really go do in this game too uh another really interesting thing about the sound is the music so choices good. here the music choices i love oh hold on we'll talk about the mutations the mutations are awesome how you can add more health you can add more skills and every time you do it your character sort of goes through this really 
painfully looking mutation system. But the music is really soothing and it's very techno at times but it's really well done. And then the meaty sound of a bullet or a crossbow or getting hit or anything, bite, bang. Uh, that's just stellar how that just sounds when you hear it. It really is a brilliant piece of work. There are so many wonderful things. Critical shot, right. awesome. Um, there's so many awesome things along all this that makes it so stellar in its design and everything. And picking up all these wonderful things. Oh, they're talking about boombox now. Oh, have a listen. Look at this beauty. The ancients left a lot of ugly junk behind, but once in a while you see something like this. Wonder what these buttons are for. I wouldn't touch it if I were you. I'm not kidding around. Lay off the buttons. What's up your butt? That's a bomb, all right. They used to call it a boom bomb. Don't be pretending you know what any of this crap is. We'll bring it back to the Ark and show it to Prip. Ask him what it's worth on the black market. Follow me. There are so many funny. Oh, here's a really another wonderful thing is the chests. The chests are scattered through each sort of zone that you go through, and you can pick up guns, pick up armor, pick up add ons and whatnot. Are really good. This is a good cool shot showing you the levels because height and stealth are big things in this game. If you don't have enough height on an enemy or if you don't have enough sort of stealth you can be discovered really easy but if you've got Sorry the stealth and the height you can do just like that. You can just take out an enemy without even blinking and in combat that changes so much in this game. Like a lot of the scenes from this point on you're going to see just combat on top of combat and the combat is so hard it's not it's not XCOM hard but it is still hard in the sense that it's difficult to sort of manage these kind of little tidbits where you have to figure out which is the more stealthy which is not more stealthy what's the right weapon for this particular encounter and a lot of the times you're going to run into an encounter and you're just going to get hammered before you even blink and like right here he summoned one of the guys that were in the background that I totally missed and I need to get him before I went and came and took out these two guys but if you don't do the stealth or the scouting or looking at who's where in the map you can get totally oblivionized by a small group before you even know it and then there are ones that will summon other ones there are ones that are going to control other ghouls and all sorts of shit storms can happen like there is one ghoul that is purely into pyro and it will throw fire bombs every second round at you and if you amp that one up and don't take it out before it happens you're screwed or worse yet is the medical bots the medical bots Sleeper. are such Master, a pain great work. and if the medical bot sort of suddenly goes oh look someone's damaged run over heart heals them for half health and then that person is up again and the med bots running over to whoever the else is the the elevator. He says and he have a second to lose. you can lose a battle important. so f fast it's not funny the slight upside is, is the battles will be saved before you actually enter into battle, so your auto save will help you, but you personally saving and loading, saving and loading is a really important part of this game where you can get into it. Um, the story is relayed in a lot of cutscenes and the in-between sort of talking while you're on missions. That's kind of how this is done. It's no FMV, it's just really nice artistic work. And this is your hub. This is where you come to do, do all your weapons upgrades, your weapon modifications, um, get perks, or to down? buy extra right items that you need at any point in time. Any it's a really important sort of 
area and structure to do. Like you need gun parts to upgrade your guns, you need scrap in order to buy stuff and so on and so forth. And you need um, artifacts in order to get more perks in the actual town or in the overall makeup of you surviving out in the wilderness. And I love how each of the shop vendors here have their own sort of arc about how no pun intended how they have their own sort of different spiel on who they are and what they do like the bartender doesn't give a rats he just says look here have some alcohol get drunk and oh did you find anything i'll take that off your hands so there's a lot of give and take in those kind of design ideas and I really like it and it's really enjoyable to go through all these bits and pieces like for some of the perks you can get um, you can last longer if you get killed so you don't bleed out as quickly uh, you get more space in your backpack for more grenades you get discounts for sales and so on and so forth there's so many little tiny things that add to their overall gameplay and the depth of things you can do to help you in combat because at the end of the day like Dungeons and Dragons or any other role playing game you need to sort of edge your way in a way so you, you can know the drill. take out other Stalkers enemies more easily and, and it's very difficult to do that when you're, you're not equipped well and if you're not equipped well or you don't know like, the mechanics of how to do it you're basically going to be wiped across the floor before you Don't even blink. Ever, ever pull my chain. If you pull my chain, I'll feed your ding-dongs to a zone wolf. Got that? Beautiful. Happy shopping. <laughs> oh, she's awesome. Um, guns, everything costs a small fortune in scrap. Safe travel. So, yeah, it's a really difficult thing. Oh, I got hammered here. I got pinned by dogs. And, yeah. If you get into the field of awareness and they become aware of you, you get shoved straight into combat straight away. And the best thing is to try and avoid that. You try and stealth it as much as possible in some respects. Or at least take out the bigger enemy and take out the smaller enemies before the bigger enemies suddenly become aware of your existence. This turned out alright because it wasn't too hard because I'd just upgrade Duck's, that's D-U-X not D-U-C-K, Duck's weapon with both the scope which gives him more range and also fire effect which basically uh, burns the enemy for one to two rounds more which is really an awesome sort of upgrade and helps immensely at times in this game. But yeah as you can see Repositioning yourself will give you better cover, gives you better likelihood of taking out targets, and it's easier to do jobs. So it's all about that sort of planning phase. And the best part about it is you don't have to <laughs> run into it. It asshole. can be a very slow, blazing, blazing sort of thing. If you run into each battle, you will not have a party by the end of it because if your party member bleeds out that's it they're dead they don't come back so it's very important that you sort of maintain that juggling act of stealth and hammering them hard when you can hammer them because you don't do these two things and the very important thing is say before you walk through a map at the very beginning and then just go straight through it because you will find it will be easier and quicker as if you do a hard and fast run right through a field and then come back and then redo it again knowing what and who's there so it's easier for you to actually do it because sometimes you will walk into a map and you will fail first time round within one to two rounds so it's very important that you understand exactly what you're getting into before you really let it go. Now one thing that I do find interesting about this is that you can actually initiate ambush before you're in the position that you want to be. 
So if you know an enemy's field of awareness is where you're near, if you can sneak up behind them and activate your ambush straight away, you can jump into it and then reposition yourself just in the right position so that you've got the perfect shot to take them out. So very important sort of mechanical idea. These guys you gotta take out because otherwise they summon enemies every second to third round and it is so hard after that point in time. If you want more experience, by all means, leave them alive as long as possible. But you will find that you'll get overwhelmed in combat far too quickly. And another interesting mechanic is that you have to reload your weapon. If you don't reload your weapon, you'll be out of bullets. So that's a really good mechanic that makes you think again whether something's good or bad. So yeah. So at the end of the day, Mutant uh, Year Zero, Road to Eden, is a really intensely sort of um, XCOM sort of strategy based turn based game but at the same time it has a lot more differences in it to make it feel different it feels so much more non nexcon game it feels like a real world that you have to try and live in and try and save other peoples and save other lives and ducks is dead Whoops, sorry, killed ducks. He's, he's fine, he's just bleeding out. I'm just going to kill this guy in four more rounds and then I'll be right. But that whole dynamic of moving fast and trying to plan out each of your attacks and everything is really awesome. So anyway, I've been Shane from Astral Dragon Game. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Please, if you do like the video, please go comment and like down below and if you want to stick around and have another watch of something else I do please hit that subscribe button and make sure you hit that bell icon other than that I hope you've had an enjoyable time with Mutant Year Zero I highly recommend that you have a look at it other than that have a good night bye stay right there who are you you're Selma right you're a mutant like us, on Hammond's team. Do I owe you money? No. Did I kill your brother? No. And Selma I am. Who are you? I'm Ducks, and he's Borman. Hello? Like the only walking duck and boar in the whole arc? Come on. That's funny. I think you've mistaken me for someone who gives a duck. I've got to catch up to Hammond before it's too late.